and uh, thank you for having me. I'm going to tell you something about water for the hydrogen economy. And in Dutch hydrogen, the word is waterstof. So it's stuff all about water. Um, I'll tell you uh, something uh, about short introduction about WLM. Then I'll give you some examples of green hydrogen in the Northern Netherlands. And then uh, the water use of green hydrogen and especially its effect on availability of fresh water. I'll end my presentation by an example how to be able to optimize the efficiency of green hydrogen production. Well, VLN was founded about 45 years ago by its two stakeholders, the drinking water company of Groningen and the WMD, the drinking water company of Drenthe. It started as a laboratory for the control of drinking water and developed through the years to a consultancy on water technology and water quality in the complete range of water issues in the Northern Netherlands. So drinking water, of course, industrial process water, wastewater, and public water. We are working, working closely together with all the water partners in the region. And we try to bring the knowledge that is developed in institutes like WETSIS to find solutions for our customers and vice versa. Well, enough about WLN. Let's go to the green hydrogen, an essential element in our energy transition to fight global warming. We have given ourselves some big challenges here in the Northern Netherlands. Here you see a picture of the project North H2, together with governments, industries, Harbor authorities and our national gas company, the Gasuni, a plan is to ve developed to produce green hydrogen for the industry in the Netherlands and parts of Belgium and Germany, together with a backbone of, uh, of pipelines while using part of the natural gas grid that is now in operation. Source, of course, is offshore wind, pure water, and using electrolyzers to produce the hydrogen. There's some huge goal. Four gigawatt production in 2030 and 10 plus gigawatt production in 2040. As an example, one gigawatt of electricity is the consumption of about a million households. And at the moment, the largest hydrogen electrolyzer is 10 megawatt, that's in Japan, and 20 megawatt being built in Canada. In the Netherlands, the largest is a one megawatt in operation in the province of Groningen called Highstock, and a 20 to 60 megawatt plant, Jules, is planned. So we have a long way to go up to those four gigawatts. Another example that's at the shore at Scheveningen is a pilot called Poseidon to produce hydrogen on a platform using offshore wind and ultra pure water fed by seawater. Of course, at sea, there's no fresh water availability, but we must realize that the production of ultra pure water from seawater costs almost 10 times the energy as the production of ultra pure water from fresh water. At NL Stenden, a electorate on water smart hydrogen just started, as we already uh, heard from Case in his introduction this morning. And also at the University of Groningen, a lot of research is done at the Energy Academy and at Antris, a pilot uh, experiment space. So lots of things are starting to happen on the subject of green hydrogen. Of course, there's lots more, but now to our topic. The water technology and the effect on the availability of fresh water. First, which amount do we need of water to produce green hydrogen by separating oxygen and hydrogen out of water by electricity? Well, a one gigawatt electrolyzer that's an electrolysis that consumes one gigawatt of electrical power, 
uses about 210 cubic meters per hour ultra pure water of very low conductivity. In a recent study, the possibilities of locating large scale electrolyzers in the Netherlands was investigated at five industrial sites, among which the northeastern part of Groningen. Here we see some calculations of the amount of water needed for the operation of a four gigawatt electrolyzer, which we'd like to put in, in, in operation in 2030. The fresh water feed will be about 11 million cubic meters per year. And hereby we assume that cooling is done with seawater, otherwise we need twice as much. A nice example of the production of ultra pure water is located close to the city of Emmen in Drenthe. Here, the source is treated municipal wastewater and the revenue is almost pure H2O. The capacity of this factory is 600 cubic meters an hour. So good for three gigawatt electrolyzers. 15 years, it's already in operation and we have the experience to, uh, to run this factory. The knowledge, the technology is introduced by WLN and by WMD, the drinking water company of uh, Drenthe. Extra, we see in this uh, factory the removal of pharmaceuticals, also mentioned this morning as a very large threat of our environment. The activated carbon step that is in this process already removes pharmaceuticals for almost 15 years without regeneration. Normally after three years, the activated carbon has to be regenerated, uh, costing a lot of energy and not being sustainable. But here, there is something going on of adsorption, desorption, and biological conversion. And the mechanism is not really clear yet, but two PhDs at Wetzes here are uh, investigating this, this mechanism. But there's more industry that needs fresh water, like data center, Google, power plants, and chemical and bio-based economy. So there are some challenges in Groningen, especially if we take into account the three dry summers, 2018, 19, and 20. The limited, the limited availability of drinking water, the brackish or salt groundwater, and the expansion of the industry. Here we have the situation in the Groningen harbors. Two large industrial sites, Eemshaven and Delcel, together with the industries around the cities of Emmen and Groningen, it's called Gempert Europe. Recently also proclaimed as Hydrogen Valley by the European Committee, who supports the green hydrogen plants. The industrial freshwater demand in the Groningen harbors will grow from about 10 million cubic meters per year at the moment to around 30 million cubic meters a year in 2030, 2035. This all depending on the pace of the introduction of the hydrogen economy. Here you see a picture of the Eemshaven, where recently 600 hectares is designated for expansion of the industrial site. This sustainable energy transition towards a hydrogen economy also means a huge water transition. The sources used today are not enough to fulfill these future demands. Treated municipal wastewater from the city of Groningen is an interesting source to fill in part of the gap. Then we will have a circular solution going from the loo to H2. So we open the theater of the water transition. The program shows us a circular solution in three acts. From zero to 10 million cubic meters per year, fed by a source, the, the canal water from the Ames Canal. Then the second act from 10 to 20 million cubic meters, fed by treated municipal wastewater. And the third act by circular water solutions in the harbors itself. 
This first act already is in place. In Groningen, we are happy to have anticipated already in the past on a growing industrial process water demand. Earlier this year, the first act of the water transmission was finished, being able to produce 10 million cubic meters a year and transport it to the Ames Haven. Source is water from the Ames Canal, launching customer is Google Data Center, and Northwater, our partner in, in industrial uh, process water delivery in Groningen, designed it, built it, and operates it. The second act we hope to start soon. We are going to pilot three sustainable technologies with very low chemical use to upgrade the quality of the treated wastewater, combining this with the technology from the first act. Additional goal is the removal of pharmaceuticals from the treated wastewater in order to prevent them from ending up in the Wadensee, a vulnerable ecosystem. Third act of the water transition is the reuse of industrial wastewater in the harbors themselves, combined with underground seasonal water storage to overcome the hot, dry summer periods. For this act, we started this year with designing a serious game, which together with an hydrological model and different future scenarios, gives us the opportunity to experiment the future challenges of the water transition in a safe environment with all the stakeholders. And Ivo Wenzler from NIL Stenden, one of the partners in the project, thought us this is enabling us to make memories in the future and recognizing them when future turns into reality and decisions have to be made. And now for the two last slides of my presentation, a possibility to optimize the efficiency of green hydrogen production. Using again water as a carrier of waste heat Bring, it, bring, in, bring in it into the municipal heat grid of Warmtestad in the city of Groningen. A quick calculation shows us that by moving electrolyzer capacity to the city, we need about half a gigawatt to fulfill the need of the city's heat network. Only concentrated building blocks are suited to connect to a municipal heat grid. The, the other houses can be heated by using hydrogen instead of natural gas, reusing the existent, existing gas grid. And of course, industries can use the excess hydrogen or it can be fed into the hydrogen backbone, which will run close by. Treated wastewater will be used as a source for the necessary ultra pure water. And of course, this can not only be done in Groningen, but it can be done in cities like Leeuwarden as well. And then I come to my take home message. Of course, energy transition is water transition, as I showed you. And realize that next time when you are on the loo, you can be part of the production of H2. Thank you very much. Yeah, that is food for thought.